so uh, my name is NJ. Um, I helped start the Brackets project. And uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about um, what to work on in Brackets. And you know, I'm in the enviable position of being the guy between you and lunch. So try to keep it quick. Um, so, uh, you know, so we've had all these um, talks, uh, really good talks about you know, how Brackets works and how you can contribute to Brackets and all this. So there's just some ideas of what you can actually work on in Brackets uh, for the hackathon. And as we've been saying kind of all day, it's still very early days, and we've kind of been, you know, up until a couple weeks ago, we were the only people working on it. So a lot of the stuff we've been talking about is a little bit internally focused. It's about all the core components and all this kind of stuff that we've been thinking about. But as we open it up and, and get more people to work on it, we want to see what you guys come up with and what kinds of things you would need to support the kinds of functionality that you'd like to see in brackets. So the first thing is there's lots of ways to contribute, as with any open source project that isn't code. Um, just using brackets and testing it and telling us what you like and don't like is very helpful. Um, and of course, any bugs or feature ideas you can have uh, that you have a uh, file in our GitHub uh, uh, issue tracker. So um, for feature ideas, what we end up doing with those is we end up taking them from the issue tracker and putting them in the Trello backlog that Adam mentioned before, which is a public backlog. And one of the nice things about doing it on Trello is that um, people who aren't part of the project can actually go and vote or comment on items in the Trello backlog. So um, if you go there, you can take a look at all the stuff that's in there. Um, right now, it's not super clean. We kind of moved it from an internal Scrum tool we were using. So it's actually a little bit hard to read right now. Um, we're going to be going and cleaning that up uh, over time. And then, of course, it's also very helpful if you uh, do run into problems as you're like trying to hack on brackets, and there's like a question that our existing documentation doesn't address, or even using brackets if um, you have some ideas for like how we could document how to use it, because we don't have any of that right now. Um, it would be great uh, to go ahead and just start um, putting some of that stuff up on the wiki. Now, of course, if you do want to contribute code, um, there's a few things you can do. And again, we're sort of early days with this stuff. One of the things that we've started doing is tagging some issues in the issue tracker as starter bugs. Um, there's about there's like a couple of those right now. Basically, things that we think should be pretty easy for somebody who isn't necessarily familiar with the whole code base but wants to dive in and try a few things. Um, and we've also started doing that with some items in the backlog as well. We've labeled them starter features. Um, these are probably going to be a little bit more work. You're going to want to start a discussion about them before diving into those. Um, but again, we've only you know, labeled a couple of those things. Really, what we're interested in is what do you want to see in brackets? What ideas do you have um, for things that could go in? Um, if you do want to pick out a particular bug um, uh, in the issue tracker, we have a couple of processes around uh, the way we're managing bugs right now. The GitHub issue tracker actually doesn't have a ton of like, built-in workflows and things like that, and we're trying to keep it lightweight. But we do have a couple of things just to make sure people aren't working on the same thing. So uh, we tend to mark bugs with this label fix in progress if somebody's working on it. And if somebody's actually already fixed it um, and has a pull request up, we mark it, or and has a pull request accepted, but it hasn't been verified yet, we mark it fixed but not closed. So make sure that a bug you want to sign up for doesn't have either of those labels. Uh, and then just comment on the bug saying that you're working on it. Um, and then after you've submitted a pull request following the processes that Ty and Glenn have talked about, uh, once it's merged, just add another comment to the bug to the filer saying, hey, can you just verify that this was fixed? And then the filer can close it. If you want to sign up for a bigger feature, um, you know, as, again, as other people have mentioned, make sure that you start a discussion about it on our Google group or on our IRC channel. Um, we've probably done a little bit of thinking about it internally before, um, but if it's a new, thing that, a new idea that you have, um, it would be great to just get a discussion going with the community and see what people think about you know, how the feature should look or work. Um, and you can just describe it in words. You can um, make mockups and things like that. Or you could even just post a prototype, um, either as a branch in your own fork of brackets uh, or as an extension. So talking about extent, oops, actually, I guess this is a, I think I'm not getting there yet. Yeah, OK. So in terms of pull requests, so if you do put a pull request up for a bug fix or a new feature, um, the core brackets team will try to get to any kind of small pull requests uh, relatively quickly, just try to absorb it as part of um, daily work. Uh, if you have a larger change or like a big feature that you want to get pulled into the core of brackets, um, we need to work that into our sprint schedule. So we work in these fairly short sprints, two and a half weeks long, which is kind of a weird length, but it seems to be working for us. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll um, take your heads up that you've got a bigger pull request in, and then we'll try to schedule it um, for a, a future sprint. But it shouldn't be too long, because our sprints are pretty short. So talking about core versus extensions, so you know, one of the things that um, somebody mentioned is 
you know, it's kind of hard to dive into this big existing code base. It's a lot easier to, to start by making a small extension. And in fact, a lot of the functionality that you might want, you know, little editor conveniences and things like that are things that should be easily implementable as extensions. Um, and in fact, we want to keep the core of brackets small. Like one of the um, philosophies that we have is that the real core of it just shouldn't have that much stuff in it. It should just have stuff that is commonly needed by extensions. But pretty much most of the functionality that you would actually want um, should be implemented as extensions. And as Peter and others have mentioned, we're still very early in our thinking about how extensions should work, and it's a very simple mechanism right now. So there aren't a lot of specific extension APIs. Um, so what we'd like is, you know, if you do want to build something new, that you try to build it as an extension, and then just let us know or let the community know, have a discussion about where you run into problems, where you want a more general API to help you do the kinds of things that you're trying to do. Um, you know, you need uh, better access to the editor, or you need um, things like that. Um, if you're building your own extension, of course, if you're just building it off in your own repo, you don't need to submit a pull request to us for anything. Uh, you can just add a link to a page where we're just keeping a list of these extensions right now, so we don't have like a whole mechanism for installing and discovering and 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 so on uh, uh, extensions automatically from within the product. Right now, it's just you know people posting links um, up there. So um, uh, for stuff that you're just working on, um, it's just great to let people know about it. Uh, you can do that by putting it on this page, posting in the Google group. Um, but for functionality that would make sense to distribute with brackets as like part of the core distribution, then we can pull it into the um, into our extensions folder and view it there. So in terms of how to build an extension, like I mentioned, it's actually pretty simple right now. Um, inside the brackets source folder, so in the source tree, there's just an extensions folder, and in there is a user folder. And basically, to create a new extension, you create a f you just create a folder in there uh, with whatever name you want, and then you put a main.js file in there that contains your main module. I'll talk about the main module in a second. Um, and this is just like any other module. So Peter showed like you know the this basic hello world module. Um, th when you're writing an extension module, it's exactly the same as a normal module. The only difference is with how require works. So when you use require in a module in an extension module, you get a private copy of whatever modules you're requiring, so you don't conflict with other extensions. If you want to access one of the core brackets modules, like document manager, or editor manager, or whatever then you have to use brackets.get module instead of require. But otherwise, it works exactly the same way. And in that case, you'll get the common central uh, module that brackets loads. So as an, oh boy, kind of tiny. Should have bumped up the font size on this. Um, can I do that? Oh yeah, there you go. Yay, HTML. Um, so uh, you know, again, it looks very similar. So this is like a simple hello world module. Um, basically, what it does is it adds a menu item that says hello document and gets the current documents file name from document manager. So you can see that, again, it's very similar to the simple module that Peter showed before, except um, what it does is it uh, uh, calls brackets.get module for document manager. Um, and then right now, you can see it's doing a pretty hacky thing to actually get, um, uh, to add the menu item. And, and I'll talk about that in a second. So if I actually do this in brackets right now, so in my copy of brackets, I don't actually have that menu item. But if I just copy that folder, let's see. Okay, that's there. So now if I reload brackets, command R is a handy way to quickly reload. And now it's in here in the menu, and then it just tells me what the current document is. So you cannot create some menus yet. Nope. Um, right now it's just flat menus. So obviously we're gonna we need to add that at some point. Okay, so oops, read my Gmail. Um, okay, so as I said, it's very early days with this stuff. Um, there's still some limitations. Um, so right now. The main module is hard-coded to main.js. Obviously, we should be using something like package.json. Um, and we don't have clean APIs for adding menu items or keyboard shortcuts. That's something we're working on, actually, uh, in this sprint. Um, so right now, if you want to put something in the menu, you kind of have to hack it in by just reaching into the DOM and finding the menu item you want to add it after. Um, and as I mentioned, we don't really have mechanisms for discovering or installing these extensions yet. Um, one thing that's uh, worth looking into, so that I've kind of talked about you know, just adding a general feature to brackets. But some of the existing features in brackets already have um, extensible mechanisms, uh, extensibility mechanisms built in. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about them, but if you just kind of look at the code, um, you can see how some of them work. So, um, so uh, Ty, I think, showed this quick open feature, which is really cool. I use that a lot. So um, if I'm in, let me open a, let me just open the brackets folder. I have something a little more meaty here. So um, Command Shift O. It's kind of like Quicksilver or you know, one of these other things. Basically, if you just start typing something, it'll look for files with that in the file name. 
Um, if you type uh, at something, then it looks for, oh, so let me go into, if I pick a JavaScript file and then I type um, at something, it'll show um, the, um, the methods that start with that. If I type colon, I can go to a line number. Not super discoverable right now. We're going to add other ways to do this stuff. Um, so you can add new kinds of quick opens to support other kinds of languages or to support other kinds of special prefixes. So like if you wanted to create a quick open that you know, knew how to find um, functions in PHP files or you wanted to add a different kind of, of, of quick uh, search, um, there's a add quick open plugin that you can call. And that basically just takes a bunch of parameters saying you know, what the methods are um, that you need to implement. And then for those inline editors, which is called quick edit uh, in the UI, uh, you can also create your own kind of inline editor. So if you actually look in the um, extensions disabled folder that's in master right now, there's a, the JavaScript inline editor that, um, that Adam showed and um, the inline image viewer. Um, those are both uh, in the extensions disabled folder. And you can see how they create this inline edit provider that lets you basically create your own little inline editor. And then also, of course, for extensions to new languages, we're relying on the underlying code mirror mode support. And code mirror actually has a bunch of modes for pretty much every language under the sun, like they have Fortran. Um, but uh, they're not all hooked up in brackets yet because we need to basically map file extensions to those modes. So there's some stuff in editor utils for um, mapping those. Uh, if you want to create a new mode, of course, you could um, do it using the standard code mirror API um, and then hook it up through this uh, uh, mode mapping in editor utils. OK, so um, that's kind of it. So you know, I just wanted to close with uh, you know, talking about what we, you know, we really wanted to build something that people would really use. And when I started working on the prototype for this last year, um, you know, there's been all this great you know, burgeoning energy in development tools for JavaScript. There's you know, bootstraps and, and boilerplates and frameworks and stuff like that. But it seemed like there wasn't a lot of innovation at that time in sort of basic code editing. People are kind of using the sort of code editors that they had been using. And now we're kind of seeing this big, I think, burgeoning interest in making that better. So I know how many of you saw, like, Brett Victor gave this really great talk on how to make development you know, more live and interesting. And um, there's light tables coming out and stuff like this. So there's a lot of people working in this area now and trying to make basically the development experience a lot better. And that's one of the things that we really want to do with this is just make it so that our code editors can be as cool as all the other tools that we have around JavaScript and HTML development now. So uh, go for it. Um, and uh, please let us know what you come up with. Thanks. <laughs>